My name is Chris Day. I am from Brighton, Illinois, and I am an artist, a teacher, a husband, and father. It's interesting. So what would I paint if I'm going to paint God, right? So I think it goes to my understanding of what God is. So to me, God is not a thing. He is not a deity. God is not um, um, uh, this old man sitting in a chair with a big beard and has all the power in the world. Um, God is everywhere. So if I turn over a leaf, he's there. Um, when I look at a star, he's there. When I think about how a star is made, I understand he's there. When I think about a black hole, he's there in that particular process. So this process is everything. It's everywhere. This process, it never ends. It is fully God. It is fully this universal thing, this power within all of it. All of the fullest potential lives within it all of the time. So how can I draw that? I can't. I'm limited. What I can do is draw bits and pieces, little fragments of how I feel that life is like dealing with being human, dealing with thinking that I'm in this universal place, and dealing with thinking that me and others have a soul. So all I can do is translate a very small portion of what I understand, what I've felt, and what I've seen in this world. That translates to my work. One thing that I try to reveal in everything that I do is the very first step that I make. That must be in my painting. So my gesso, my paper, whatever it is that my very first action is in the process, stretching it out, I want that to be revealed in the work. I also want my very last mark to be revealed. I want every single layer to be available for view for the viewer. And just that alone, that process of a human being, the audience looking at that process, they connect to it. So just the process itself creates uh, a, a connection to the audience. They feel something is happening because that's everywhere. That's in the biological state. It's in every science. It's in physics. These stages of, uh, uh, of a procedure, these stages of layers of information. I actually try to not feel. I try to just become sensitive to that observation that I, uh, I try to remember how I observe those things, those moments when I have those aha connections to my surroundings. I try to relate that. And I think that if I do that and I'm honest with that, the audience feels that same way. And that's a common theme when people come up to me and they, they respond to my work. That's kind of what they say. They say something, I'm connected. I feel something. I don't know what it is, though. I can't put my finger on it. There's a video that I show every single one of my classes, and it's a video of Chuck Close talking about, um, it's a note to self on CBS, and it's a letter to himself of what he would have wrote now, if he, back when he's 13 or 14 years old. What inspiration would he be telling himself as a letter if he could you know, go back in time? And so a part of it, he says, inspiration is for amateurs. He said, work begets more work. Work is what creates your ideas. When we come up with this inspiration and this big theme, this big wonderful idea, it is such an abstraction actually for us to accomplish it is difficult because we have the idea but as we could see our our handiwork, our craftsmanship, even our language never gets it exactly. So that's kind of what happened to me, long story short. I didn't know what I wanted to do until the very last portion of my graduate school. And I'm like 30 something years old, 33. I'm that old, I've been drawing all my life. Ever since I was in kindergarten, I thought anybody could draw as good as I could if they just tried. I didn't see it as a gift. I didn't see it as I was different because of it. I didn't see it as it was something I needed to do. I really didn't realize this until actually uh, my, I was married and my wife said, I'm exceptional, I've got to try this. So I went back to college. But I didn't know, I thought I was going to paint like John Singer Sargent, he's a portrait painter. I thought I was going to make all these beautiful marks and just make faces and be a portrait painter. Um, in the midst of it, through a whole series of difficult times, I realized I need to relate my emotions, my thoughts, my, uh, uh, my interpretation of this world 
without a human face in it. It was a challenge and it became exciting. Can I do this? And I realized that my surroundings were sufficient to do so. So where I live, who I am, is actually a sufficient enough place. I don't have to come with this grand idea. So I tried to focus on that. What do I have? What am I experiencing? And can I relate that? And will other people get it? And as soon as I did that, it started to happen. People started to finally respond to my work in a, in a positive way. At that moment is when I realized I can be an artist, I can make this happen, and that I should make it happen, is whenever I realized that translating my experiences through the, the visual icons that are around me, rather than in, in Paris or the Louvre or something like that, something more ideal or something. So, Actually, one reason why I became an artist, so we talked about how I feel about being an artist, kind of um, what I uh, what I feel when I'm making the work, why I make the work. Um, one of the deeper reasons why I make the work and why I went back to school, quit being a carpenter in the middle of raising a family of five, <laughs> which is crazy, uh, to go back to school full time um, was I watched my mother-in-law die basically in my living room with a brain tumor. Uh, I've seen a lot of death. I've had best friends pass away. I've had a best friend get hit by a train, get knocked out of his shoes. Numerous ones getting uh, drunk driving car accidents. And so I realized I'm gonna die. I'm very temporary. I'm, I'm a moment. What am I gonna do with a moment? Um, I could become addicted. I could become uh, very rigid. I could become selfish uh, and make a lot of money for myself. Uh, and that could be good and, and, and satisfying. Uh, but I realized, uh, what do I tell people? What do my kids want to see? And I think that that is it. When I am at the end, I want them to see that I simply tried. Things weren't easy. Things came against me. Frequently, things came against me. And I tried to stand upright. I tried to focus the best that I could. And um, even when the world might have tried to take me into a negative place, uh, I try to become as positive as I am capable of and do better decisions and, and do good. A part of that is art. Making artwork is a translation of the soul and my connection to this place. The artwork does that for me. It's going to remain for my kids, whether they understand it now or whether they understand it 20 years from now. Um, and I want them to see that in the world you're gonna have darkness and you're gonna have light. You're gonna have them both. And that's really what my artwork's about as well. Uh, 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 the fragments, the bits and pieces, the balance of light and dark. Every piece has a particular balance of that and they're both available for you to remain. So you could remain in the perspective that's focused. You could remain in a spot that's full of light. You could remain in a place that's very dark underneath something and hide away or something like that. It's up to you. If I was to translate into, uh, so for me, I transition into, you know, after death, it's a transition. So I am always who I am. Who I am translates over. I am no longer in this body. If God was to ask me what I want, what I want to do, I would explore everything. I would ask God, what's the smallest quirk? What's the smallest bit that I can see that you've done? What's the largest bit that I can see that you've done? I wanna see it, I wanna investigate and know every move that you've made, not necessarily even with humans, but on, on this entire universe. What, how do every particle, how does every quark and quasar, how do they all function? I wanna know the microscopic and the macroscopic. Let's see it all. I wanna see what God did. I wanna see every layer. I wanna see the layer from the very beginning to the very end. I wanna know every mark that he made on this creation. And I want to know it intimately and understand every single piece that he did, every move he made. I want to know. I actually look forward to that day. <laughs>